Hey everybody, make sure to check out the 2020 Fantasy Baseball Almanac and Draft Guide. It comes with free in-season advice. You can't get that anywhere else. Check it out on Amazon.com or look in the show notes below. Let's um, let's move it on to the Phillies now, um, which uh, let me say this as, a, as kind of like an outside looking in baseball fan. Um, and I know Phillies fans probably aren't going to be happy with me, but I think Nationals fans would be happy with me saying this. I was glad to see the Nationals win the World Series as soon as Bryce Harper left the team. Um, you are an Atlanta Braves fan, an unabashed Bra- Atlanta Braves fan, so you don't love the Nationals. But even even that had to make you smile a little bit to see that Bryce Harper had to watch from the outside looking in last year as his former team won the World Series without him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just come on, you have to like that, right, man? Oh, it's it, it was a it was an interesting storyline today. It was amusing. Uh, I'm not a big Bryce Harper hater by any stretch. Um, you know, there's there's things I'm not a huge fan of about him, but in general, I don't I don't hate I hate. I think the guy. he was tough. I was think he was tough in the locker room um, for that organization, and it's almost like you know they loosened up after. I mean, that's that's the narrative, right? He, he loosened up. It, 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 they became more likable for some reason without yeah. him. Um, even true. though you don't hate the guy specifically, they they became a more likable team. I can tell um, you exactly why I hate him is is when he runs and his hat or his helmet comes off, he always puts his hair back and then puts his helmet on. <laughs> yeah. And as somebody who's bald and hiding his baldness under a hat <laughs> on YouTube, it's the jealousy of that hair, the beautiful hair that he has. I cannot stand you got the it. Flow envy. I, I do. I have the flow envy. That is exactly right. But anyway, let's let, – enough of that. Um, let's talk about um, – I, I like uh, the addition of D.D. Gregorius. I think that's a very interesting ad for them. Um, Kingery at third base, I believe, is uh, is coming up, up-and-comer. Um, you know, Bryce Harper certainly had a lot of strikeouts. You actually traded him um, for another piece um, in your in your thing because he, he strikes out a lot. Um, but there's a, there is a lot to like. Obviously, at catcher, they're very strong. There's a lot to like on this team. What do you think, uh, just the batters, because we'll get into the rotation in a bit, what do you think about this Phillies organization from a hitting point of view this year? They, they should be one of the better offensive teams mm-hmm. in the league. Mm-hmm. Um, Hoskins, I think the league kind of caught up with him a little bit. Yeah, and I didn't even so mention it, him. Yeah, exactly. It depends on how he adjusts. They kind of caught up with him and figured him out, and he started, you know, his batting average plummeted to 226. Um, I know batting average isn't the, the end-all, be-all, and it's it's definitely not one of those things where you got to rank based on that. But it, <laughs> he's not putting the ball in play if he's not making anything happen and he's striking out a ton it tells you something yeah sure um so and he's generally probably a protection behind behind harper there too so um you know mccutcheon who knows what you're going to get out of him coming back from a knee injury um you know he's he's pushing the mid 30s so but with real muto he's still the best in the game you still have segura who's a good hitter who i didn't mention segura yeah yeah you know, Gregorius, I think he's going to be hurt coming out of leaving um, New York in that short right porch because if you look at that spray chart, mm. most of those homers are going out of New York Stadium, you know, in a very, very short porch. Um, very good nearly, note. Uh, very good little, note. Um, in that sense. So, I, you know, I actually, um, I actually have a feeling that his replacement, um, Cesar Hernandez, or the guy he replaced, I should say, Cesar Hernandez, who's now with the Indians, will have a better year than Didi will. Oh, bold prediction number two on this podcast, although we're breaking these videos out, so this is bold prediction number one for the Phillies. There you go. Yeah. Um, but he's, you know, he could easily do well. It's still a hitter's park. He's not a bad player by any stretch, sure, but I don't sure. think he's as good as he looked in New York because the power played up there. Um, Kingery's another one who who should take another step forward. He's a very good player. Um, and when now that they got rid of Kapler, he might actually be able to play in one spot yeah. <laughs> and kind of focus on something. Um, I think that's the biggest improvement right there for the yeah. Phillies this year is is getting rid of Kapler, um, yeah. which I can't believe someone actually hired him right out of Philly. Um, you know, I, and so you and I have talked about this in previous years. So um, analytics, I'm a, and, and functional sports, Hulk, you know, part of that, um, you know, that moniker for us in the, in the podcast, I know this is the get paid podcast, but the functional sports, Hulk, the company was founded because I like analytics. Functional is, is kind of like a play on, on words, right? The function, you know, math. Um, I like analytics, but I also really heavily criticize the Dodgers in the World Series because you go you go nuts with it and you can't I think you use it I think you're foolish 
not to use it, but when you go overboard, there is a, a fine line there where sometimes you just got to let the players play. And, <clears throat> you know, these guys that are just going over the top of the analytics, I think are uh, sometimes to a detriment of the organization. And specifically, um, what I hate about it, and we're talking about lineup, I know, uh, but I hate it when you when you pull your starters that are in a groove because the analytics tell you, hey, let's let's pull this pitcher at five and two thirds innings so that we can get our you know our our setup guys and and get him to the bullpen. If your pitcher's in a groove and this plagued the Dodgers in the World Series for two years in a row, your pitcher's in a groove. Let him be in a freaking groove and get you you know to your to your top line um, closers and stuff. You can play more matchups later. Um, and then you know if you over analyze you know uh, over analyze and all that stuff, then you get into the extra innings and you've made so many freaking uh, adjustments. That then you have your shortstop playing pitcher and you know all these different things. I I, I just can't stand it. So yeah, I, I'm with you there. I'm with you. The 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 manager use some analytics, use a lot of analytics. Hell, just don't be beholden to them. In my opinion. Yeah, no, I, I agree completely. I think um, you know it's it's a copycat league and the yeah. the analytics are the big big thing now. Everyone's you know mm-hmm. kind of going more and more, and mm-hmm. I think we're headed for may not be this year or next year or even in the next five years, but we're headed for a course correction where they're really going to start to go back to the eye test and trusting yeah. the scouts a little more. Um, because, yeah, you said it. Um, there's, there's so many times where, okay, we shouldn't let the starter face and face the lineup a third time. Why not? He's allowed one hit. Let yeah. him go. You <laughs> yeah, know? I know. I know. I, I don't, I, you know, I'm with you on that. I don't get it at all. It, it tends to drive me nuts when I see that. Um, sometimes there's reasons where managers pull them wrong, uh, you know, early. Like if you look at last year where the way that they limited Soroka's innings in Atlanta, mm-hmm. same thing with Freed. They didn't let them – it's not because they didn't think they could get the outs the third time through the lineup or after the sixth inning. They wanted to – all right, we're going to put it on an innings limit, but we're not going to sit there and, and shut them down in, in August or September. We're right. just going to limit them throughout the season to yeah. five to six innings. And you know, let the young guys build up their strength that way, and have them fresh for the playoffs. Yeah, the sense. famous one was when I think Davy, I, I believe it was Davy Johnson for the Nationals, limited Strasburg's innings. I think his rookie or second year, or something like that. And they made the playoffs, but they shut him down, and they wouldn't let him pitch in the postseason because they overpitched him, like you know, through August. It's like, dude, what? The-? Okay, if you're gonna have a plan, I don't mind it as a plan, like as a as a season end. Hey, we don't want this guy to throw any more than 150 innings or whatever the number is. I don't mind that. And, you know, you put them on a pitch count or whatever it is, right? But um, what I do mind is game to game is like, oh, let's not, like you said, I don't want him to face the, the lineup a third time. He's like, you know, he has like 18 strikeouts in six innings and giving up one hit. And I'm like, I don't want him to, <laughs> I don't want him to face yeah. it again. It's just, it's just weenie baseball, I think. But no, oh, I whatever. agree. And it, even just the, um, the innings limit thing itself, I, I don't, on the surface, I think it's misleading. To sit there and say I only want him to throw 150, 150 innings. Yeah, it's pitches. It, it's hard to judge because how many pitches did he throw in each of those innings? Mm-hmm. If he could go, if you're going to limit him to five innings a start, fine. But did he throw 120 pitches in those five innings, or did he throw 60? Right, exactly. You know? So I, I think pitch count. It's it's kind of hard to say. I'm going to limit him to 10,000 pitches this year or something. But yeah, you know, it's hard to limit it that way. But you have to look at it in that regard. You can't just say a flat 150 innings and he's done because if he's a, an efficient pitcher that goes out there and you know he's average if he there's pitchers that can go out there and go you know 80 pitches over nine innings sure you know you're cutting their innings just because of that you know you got to look at the pitches as well and i love um i think i've said this before we need we, we i'd be great to get mazzoni on here leo mazzoni the old pitching coach from atlanta because he hates innings limits he hates babying these pitchers and to hear him talk about it is yeah, I mean, the guy still knows what the hell he's talking about, but it's absolutely amazing and really entertaining to hear. I should reach out to him because you being a lifelong uh, Braves fan, um, especially during the, the time when the, those Braves staffs was going crazy, he was the pitching coach. And I uh, um, am a lifelong Orioles fan, although uh, let's just not talk too much about that. But Mazzoni was a manager there for a while. So uh, let me let me reach out to him. You never know um, if he'll be on this and we can just uh, kind of do this thing through Skype as we are and uh, and see if we can do a little cool a little philo- philosophical, philosophical, uh, philosophical, <laughs> philosophical, I'm like George W. Bush, philosophical, blah, 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 falafel, um, philosophical chat on that. But let's get back to the uh, to the brass tacks here. Uh, Aaron, uh, Aaron Nola, Zach Wheeler. Wheeler is interesting, the addition there. Um, you know, the Mets getting rid of him and coming over. Uh, Arietta, obviously kind of solid, but not who he was in, uh, in Chicago. Zach Eflin, Nick Pavetta, both I had on my team. They were up and down last year, my fantasy football, uh, fantasy baseball team last year year up and down uh, but could take some steps forward this year what do you think about the staff as a whole there 
Um, yeah, Nolan, Nola is one of those guys who's who's going to keep working his way up to being uh, among the better pitchers in the game. Mm-hmm. He's he's really good, and that's despite where he pitches. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I, I like him a lot. He's an early round pick for me, um, and he should continue to, you know, t- to be among the, the top guys. Uh, Wheeler, I was higher on him a little bit last year. This year I'm concerned um, a bit with him because he is a fly ball pitcher, and it's a small – very very hitter friendly park and mm-hmm. i think he's going to see a spike in his home runs there um and, and i think it's going to be a problem for him um so I, i'm leery uh, of wheeler uh you know it's a tough division as well so he's got a lot to play with it, it was last year but um yeah the home runs concern me a bit i think he's gonna he's gonna see some increase in his numbers and i don't think he's gonna live up to that contract that he signed out there that's a lot of money for a guy with an injury history and who hasn't been, you know, dominant to, to any real point in his career other than a couple stretches here and there over the last couple of years. Sure. Uh, all right. So uh, upper and lower floor and ceiling. What do you think the win totals are? Um, obviously, the, the the Phillies they have offensive firepower. I would assume that the uh, the ceiling for them is division win. But what, how do you think the season's going to go? Again, floor and ceiling. I think they're probably. I mean. Well, their ceiling, obviously, as you said, would be the division and, and, and you know, that, you know, 95 to 100 win team. Um, floor, I think they, they could easily be looking at a fourth place finish. Um, mm-hmm. They've got enough offense that should keep them out of the basement. Um, I think they'll probably be looking at a third place finish, possibly second, though, over, you know, if we're being realistic, mm-hmm. um, just depending on, on what the Nats and the Braves do here over the next couple of, of weeks, because those two teams are really in the same boat. They need one more big bat. Right. Uh, you know, the Phillies, they're they're going to hit. They're going to score runs. Their their season hinges on their pitching. I, I don't think Arietta is anything more than a back back part of the rotation guy at this stage. He's not reliable. He's, he's not going to put up, you know, solid, really, really big numbers. He's just going to kind of be there and eat innings. Um, and he really doesn't do that much because he doesn't go deep in games. Um, F and Pavetta really are probably the key to their season at this point. Um, because if, if they can pitch well and up to their potential, that changes a lot for them. If, if they kind of stick to what they were last year, a little up, a little down, good, bad, um, then the team's going to struggle because it's hard to win. I don't care how good your offense is. It's hard to win if you have to score six, seven runs a night. Sure. Sure. Unless no one on the mound. Yep. 